blessings before this wonderful message from my father in the lord late archbishop bensi idaosa i'd like to share information about anointedtube.com with you the number one christian video sharing website today anointedtube.com this is a powerful site believed to be the top most Christian video sharing website in the world today. It is ranked as one of the best video sharing website according to available data. It hosts videos of preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from all around the world. You can as well share our video on all social media platforms. The World Database of Christian Precious, positively touching and changing lives around the world. It is a great Christian video sharing website. The Lord bless you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Forget that school is 8 o'clock. His class can never pass the exam. Is anybody hearing me tonight? Whatever God has given you, He makes you the steward of it. To watch it, to grow it, and to develop it. Let me hear you say amen. amen. Please be seated. God bless you. Turn with me to the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 13. The 13th chapter. The 18th verse. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. This is Jesus speaking. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. I'd be very glad tonight if we take tonight's meeting as a Bible study 
The Bible says learning takes you off the list of those who lack. The Bible says how much you know will determine what freedom you will have. You shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. Truth is a freedom providing power. The Bible says God's people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And I have found that the need in civilized nations is not whether there are churches. It is whether the people in the church are in Christ. Hear this word from the mouth of Jesus. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. When anybody hear about healing, you hear about blessing. You hear about miracle. I stood here last night and I mentioned historically the things happening around our world. Politically, geographically, I mentioned. When you come to the circle of theologians who believe in what the Bible says, they go by the calendar of events. Some of them go to the extreme of explaining a magadum. Some of them go to the extent of explaining the Jews return from Russia as a sign that Jesus is coming in a few weeks time. Then you go to the other ones that are the old ecclesiastical canonical orders who tell you Jesus is coming soon, Jesus is coming soon, Jesus is coming soon without realizing that between here and heaven is only a trip of one minute. If Jesus left heaven 7 o'clock this evening, he should have been here by now. Because the Bible says in the twinkling of an hour. So Jesus had not left heaven at all. He is still sitting at the right hand of the Father. He has not left there. So the threatening, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. Yes, Jesus is coming, but he has not departed from heaven. If he had left there, as a matter of fact, if he left there two minutes ago, he should have been here by now. So, what are we left to? We are left to believing that there's a job to be done. And until that job is done, until every Christian here tonight is able to make the devil his first tool, Jesus is not coming back from heaven to lay hand on the sick to be well. Jesus is not coming back from heaven to tell the hungry to be fed. Jesus is not coming back from heaven to give clothes to the naked. Jesus is not coming back from heaven to bless the poor. Jesus is coming from heaven to take a church without spot and wrinkle from earth to heaven. Jesus will not come back when, if there are 2,000 sick people, only two are healed, he's not coming back. Jesus is not coming back when the church people are still in the world, defeated, afflicted, sick, and suffering. He's not coming back. Jesus is not coming back because there's a problem between Arafat and Rabin. That will not move Jesus from heaven to come to this world. Because if what happened to man can move Christ, Hitler would have made Jesus to come. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying tonight? But listen to what he's saying here. Many of you sitting down here have heard the message of the kingdom time without number. But Jesus says, if a man hears the message of the kingdom, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom about the king, either through Christmas or through Easter, that is the message of the king of kings and the lord of lords. If you hear the message of healing, you hear the message of blessing, you hear the message of deliverance, you hear the message of prosperity, 
As a matter of fact, even here in this church, for many years, I was warned by friends. Don't mention prosperity. Don't mention abundance. Don't say it at all. I get to my I get to my country, I go to America, I preach abundance, I preach miracle, I preach prosperity, I come to England, I preach poverty. Why? They don't want to hear anything that has to do with prosperity. But after a while, I decided to break the rule. Message of salvation without provision is incomplete message. Message of salvation without healing is incomplete message. Message of salvation without abundance is incomplete message. What is the full gospel? The full gospel is the gospel of body, soul, and spirit. It took me years to be able to stand even at this pulpit to say the poor can be blessed. Still, this is the only nation on earth that I restrict my voice from what I will say. Anywhere I go on earth, I know what to say. When I come to England, I calculate what to say. Why? Because many will be wounded. Many are offended. When you talk of money, you offend them. When you talk of miracle, you offend them. When you talk of prosperity, you offend them. Tonight, may you be offended. <laughs> when any man, listen to Jesus talking. When any man Hear the word of the kingdom and understand it not. Then come at the wicked one. How does the devil gain entrance to our health and our blessings? When we hear and refuse to understand. What advantage does the devil take? Immediately he jumps to your ignorance. Jesus spoke like this. In my father's house. And many mansions. Jesus spoke like this. And from above you are from beneath. Jesus spoke like this. I'm the light of the world. Jesus spoke like this. I'm come that you may have life. Jesus did not come to complain. He came to testify. Does anybody hear what I'm saying? Who needs healing? Who needs deliverance? Who needs prosperity? Who needs miracle? Christians must not only be babies, they must be mothers and fathers. Somebody say amen to that. Get out of your baby stage. Get out of your elementary school. Enter college. Get out of secondary school. Enter university. Get out of first degree. Go to master's. Get out of master's. Go to PhD. Get out of PhD. Do double degree. Christianity is a process of growing. For when you stop growing, you start diminishing. When you stop learning, you start losing. And Jesus said, the devil will not waste time, but jump to what you don't know, and the seed that was sown into you, he will take it and play it rough on you. Hear the next verse. The wicked one will take it and catch it away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receiveth seed by the wayside. Verse 20. When he that received the seed into stony places, the same is he that heareth the word and anon with joy received it. Yet had he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by, he's offended. Who are these categories? A Christian that come here to jump and shout. Hallelujah, Jesus is king. Hosanna. I'm born again. And outsiders challenge you. Where is your God? And you are not able to defend your salvation. You heard the word. The word have no root. 
My prayer tonight is that you do not only be hearers, but be rooted and grounded in the word of God. Can somebody say amen to that? Listen to the next verse. I'm preparing you to the message tonight. Yet had he no root in himself, but dureth for a while. Verse 22 says, He also that receives seed among the tongue is he that heareth the word. And the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches shook the word and he becometh unfruitful. Another category. You hear it. You disallow it to have ground at all. The first one have no root. The second one have no ground. Which is worse. The one that have no root can manage for a few times. He can be encouraged. You see here in civilized nation, you find that many times the church, instead of growing, is always having come and go, come and go, come and go. Because the devil have discovered that most of the Christians in civilized nations have not found themselves a way to be rooted that the devil and the wind of the devil cannot shake them. It's time for the church to stop being baby but become adult. When you are grounded and rooted, the wind of life cannot blow you down. Can I hear you say amen? amen. Don't be the seed on stony ground. Don't be the seed on tombs. Don't be the seed on desert. Be the seed on good ground. Listen to the 23rd verse. But he that receives seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some an hundred, some sixty, some thirty. See how Jesus described it here. The fruit-bearing Christian. The fruit-believing Christian. The fruit-growing Christian. The fruit-yielding Christian. Do not only receive blessing, but becomes a blessing. You become fruit-bearer. 160, 30. Christianity gives you the opportunity to become fruitful and provide for the world around you. Let me hear you say hallelujah. hallelujah. But this, the real message is now where we are now. Follow me to verse 24 and hear this. I want to take it now as if I were in Sunday school at home. Verse 24, another parable. This means this is completely different from what we have heard so far. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man who sowed good seed in his field. January this year, I explained this to pastors. A believer must know his field where he's sowing. This man of God told us yesterday his apostle to Eastern Bloc or Eastern Europe. He's an Englishman preaching to Germans and Russians. That is his field. If he pull away from Russia and pull away from Eastern Europe and come to live in London, he may walk and sweat. He will not get reward. Why? He doesn't know his field. Hear this very well. I refuse to become an American. 
I refused to become a British. I refused to become Australian. I refused to become a Brazilian. I refused to become a citizen of any of the civilized nation. Why? That is not my field. I can never be a Dutch man. If I want to be a Dutch man, I'm trying to go to your field. And that's not my field. You can come to Africa as Dr. Reed come. Finish your crusade, finish your seminar, take your ticket, go to the airport. Bye-bye! I'm rushing back tomorrow. Why? My field is where my reward will be. When you don't know your field, you'll be breaking the rule of God to enter another man's field. As a matter of fact, if there's anything that is my problem on earth, it's how to stay where God didn't put me. I go faster. Hear what Jesus said. Another parable put he to them. And listen to this. The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man who sowed good seed in his field. Where did he sow the seed? His field. Everyone say with me, his field. Say it louder. One more time, his field. But listen to verse 25. While men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way. I want to try to explain this as I told those pastors. It is not good enough to sow seed. It is more blessed to watch over the seed you sow. Many Christians establish businesses. They establish jobs. Immediately they have the first 10 pounds lost. 20 pounds shortage. 1,000 pounds setback. They run. Find out from the man that established Sheraton Hotel how many times he cooked when he started nobody to eat it. Find out from the man that started Holiday Inn how many times he rented a house to make it a lodging place and for months nobody came to sleep there. They were not discouraged. They stood by their field. That's why today, Sheraton Hotel Africa, Sheraton Hotel Europe, Sheraton Hotel America, Sheraton Hotel Brazil, Sheraton Hotel Mexico, Sheraton Hotel Cuba. Why? When the field shook them, they refused to bow. Only in Christianity, the first threatening of our voice and ability, when we are harassed, we run back. When non-believers are harassed, they move forward. When boxers are knocked down, they get up to win the fight. When Christians sleep, they surrender. Why do I watch wrestling and boxing? I learn from wrestlers resistance. I see my friend, Hulk Hogan. They beat him, beat him, beat him, beat him, beat him. They take him up on the frog. Bah! He's there. Five minutes. The other man will climb to the top of the rope. He say, Hulk Hogan is on the ground. He's dead. Let me finish him. They go up. They climb the first step. Go to the highest place. And all of a sudden, you see the man say, I'm going to jump on him. Fool! The man that he thought was dead. <laughs> and the man that jumped on the concrete. Why was he silent on the ground to build back his energy so that the fool can climb up to be worse than him who fell? I watched boxing round one, round two, a man is knocked down. The referee begin to count one, two. Three, four, six, eight, nine. He jumps up. The boxer says, Knock me down, you can't knock me out. Boxers know 
how to resist and how some of them you watch them eye cut bleeding nose forehead bleeding cheek bleeding they say are you ready say sure when Christians have bruise at all. Oh, to Jesus' eyes, they surrender. I begin to say to myself, why can't we learn from those who don't even know God how to resist the devil until he flees? Tonight, hear what the Bible said. The man sowed seed on his field. Immediately he finished planting the seed. Instead of watching to see that the seed grew, he went to bed to sleep. And the Bible says, why men sleep, slept, the enemy came. Why men slept, a pastor that sleeps too much, his church can never grow. A businessman that is being woken up by his wife every nine o'clock in the morning instead of seven o'clock, his business will never grow. Good teacher that forget that school is eight o'clock, his class can never pass the exam. Is anybody hearing me tonight? Whatever God has given you, he makes you the steward of it. To watch it, to grow it, and to develop it. You are in television ministry by the grace of God. If this year, for example, God forbid, you sustain a loss of 10 million, borrow another 10 million to try again next year. That's why there's loan in the bank for those who suffer setback. That's why there is borrowing system in the bank. Why are we the only group of people on earth? Immediately we put 10 pounds to a business. And we sustain the loss of five pounds. We close up the business. Unbelievers will go back to the same bank and say, you gave me 100,000, I've lost it, I need half a million. Christian will say, you gave me 10 pounds, I lost five, I brought the other five. Here you are with your money. Let's learn from those who don't know God how to resist the devil till he flees. What did Jesus say this man did? He went to bed to sleep. Now listen to these words. A man sword, hear this. Colin, hear this. Read, hear this. Every one of us, hear me. A man, Jesus said, a man sowed good seed. Verse 24. A man which sowed good seed. But why men slept? Why did the Bible come to this stage to say man sowed and men slept? Immediately he finished sowing, he saw some gang of people on the way who were lazy. And he followed them home. Did anybody hear my English? Let me repeat what I'm saying. He sowed. Get up, brother. Thank you, sir. He went to the field. He sowed good seed. While he was going home from the farm where he sowed, he saw one, two, three, four. Get up and come. One, two, three, four. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And they said, where are you coming from? Ask him, where is he coming from? Ask him loudly. I'm coming from my field where I've been sowing. Ah, you still sowing at your age? <laughs> you don't go to bed? You can't sleep? Follow us, let's go and sleep. Take him to bed, let's go sleep. <laughs> Take him to the bar, get out from there. Take him to the hotel, let's go eat. Take him to McDonald's. Take him along. <laughs> On the way to McDonald's, come back. Take him to where girls are dancing. Bring him to where women are dancing. <laughs> Turn him back. Take him to where they are eating. Take him everywhere. Begin to take him everywhere. Now take him to the house. He's drunk and you are all drunk. Go and sleep. <laughs> Go to bed. Go sleep. Go to bed. Put him to You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, 
prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Mark. Please give him a big hand. We, no matter how ambitious you are and how creative you are, if you follow those doing nothing, you go to bed. Look at the simple English used by the Bible. A man went to feed to sow, but men slept. Why did the Bible say why men slept? Because that man finished sowing and met those who were not sowing. So what did they do? They say it's sleeping time. So they all went to bed. What happened when they slept? The devil who doesn't sleep. Is anybody hear what I'm saying? Ran to the field. Took the seed out. And put tears there. What did the devil do after he put it there? After he substituted his good effort. He didn't hold meeting with anybody. No board of trustees. No committees. He ran away. Hear this, people. This is challenge today to you all. Don't only sow. Don't only plant. Don't only plan. Stay by your vision. Don't lose focus. Even when you are shaking, don't give up. Stand your ground. The man talking to you tonight have had more opportunities in 55 years to backslide. But I choose to front slide. I've had more opportunities to suffer. But I know that Jesus bore my sufferings. I have had more opportunities to die, but I know he was crucified for me. I have had more opportunities to be without, but I know that my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. I have had more opportunities of being disappointed and heartbroken, for he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace were laid on him, and by his stripes we are healed. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Men slept. Man sowed. Men slept. The gang you move with determines your growth. And your attitude will determine your attitude. The people
people you talk with will decide whether you will grow or diminish. This evening, I said to Dr. Reed, I've not bought nuts, I've not bought a few gifts for my children at home. Let me rush to, rush to the shop. I came outside to enter the car. The wind said, go inside. I told myself I'm going outside. If I listen to the wind, I will not do the shopping. I took some servants of God. We rushed to the shop. They couldn't know I could be as fast as I did tonight. I found out that when you are in England in winter, you can't slow down. <laughs> people may think the English people are too smart. They are not too smart. They are smart from the breeze. When I was small, every time I see a white man holding the wife's hand, I say, see how he loved the wife. I now know they are warming up. <laughs> Men slap! Listen to this, Dr. Michelson. Man sold, men slept. But well, look at the devil. The enemy. The enemy did not sleep. When men stop sowing, the devil takes over. When you stop watching, the devil takes over. I preached a message last night. Why shepherd on the field watching over their sheep by night? Some of us don't even wake up in the night in the room to check how our children are sleeping. We sleep and snort till daybreak. But shepherds on the field watching over their sheep by night. Many pastors don't know where their members live because of civilization. Many members don't know where their co members live because of civilization. What's your reason? Mind your business. What did the Bible say? Shepherd on the field, watching their sheep by night. What is the shepherd doing? Counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten. Complete. Twenty minutes later. One, two, four, seven, nine, ten. Five a.m. One, two, three, nine, ten, complete. Six a.m. Sheep, follow me. Go grace. What is the relationship between the church and their shepherds today? Go east, go west. Men slept. Devil refused to sleep. What did he do? So tears. What did he do? He left. As quickly as possible, he departed. Listen to this. Listen to the next verse. This is the real serious verse of all the verses. Verse 27. Verse 26. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tears also. 27. So the servants of the household holder came and said unto him, Sir, listen to this calling. He was still sleeping. He so slept that his servant came to wake him up. And when servant begin to wake master, you are oversleeping. Look around the whole of Brentwood. All the big stores are owned by unbelievers. Look around London, the best hotel owned by sinners. Look around the whole of England, the biggest bank, none of the owners speak in tongues. What do we owe? Kiosk. <laughs> what do we owe? Bicycle. What do we owe? Volkswagen. What do we owe? Dilapidated homes. What do we have? Zero. Eight 
80% of Christians are tenants. 80% of sinners are landlords. Why? They believe in achievement and we believe in going to heaven. I believe in heaven, but I believe that Jesus said, Occupy till I come. So those of you in hurry, go ahead. When you come back, you meet me here. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying tonight? I rather obey him to stay here, subdue the earth, and make the enemy my full stool. So when Jesus come back, I hear him say, Well done, thou faithful servant. That's why I don't allow my choir to sing soon and very soon. We are going to see the king. That's why I don't allow them to sing, I fly away. Stay here, don't fly away. Slow down, not soon and very soon. He slept. His servant came and said, Sir, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? He was not aware. Let's slowly consider what I'm reading tonight. The seed grew, the seed sprang up. The seed had a blade. From the time of sowing to time of growing and springing up and having blade, he never went back to see. No crop can be faster than six weeks to produce. No fruit can be grow faster than eight weeks. No corn, no matter how hygienically and agriculturally fast, no corn can have corn. From the time it was sown to the time of eating fresh corn, less than eight weeks. But this man was still sleeping. And the servant came and said, Sir. Was he really calling him sir? No, he was saying fool. But did he call him fool? No, sir. But look at the question. Did this thou not so? Good seed in thy field. From whence then had it tears? He said unto him, An enemy had done this. The servant said unto him, Without then that we go and gather them up? He said, Nay. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. The field you refuse to attend to, the enemy will attend to it. The business you refuse to care for, the devil will care for it. The marriage you refuse to look at, the devil will look at it for you. Your health you refuse to care for, the devil will care about it. My challenge to you tonight is, don't only expect a miracle. Get a miracle and maintain your miracle. It's easier to receive and keep than to replace. I have been well these many years since I found Christ. Why am I constantly well? Because I know if the devil will gain advantage to take my life one day, he will put me in the grave the next day. So what do I do? I fight a good fight. I war against principalities and powers. I stand my ground. I say, devil, if you knock me down, you can't knock me out. If you put me to bed, I will say no. Why? He was bruised for my iniquity. He was wounded for my transgression. How do I know? The word of God says so. Stand to your feet. Where are we coming from tonight? It is not enough to go to church. Benefit. Psalm 103 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name, who forgiveth all thy iniquity, who healeth all thy diseases, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, and forget not his benefit. 
What does that mean? Serving God is beneficial. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not his benefit. Coming to kingdom is to start to have benefits. Knowing Christ is to have benefit. Following him is to have benefit. Working for him is to have benefit. I was talking with Dr. Reed today on our way to London. I said, we both said, just as faithful as Dr. Hathaway has stayed his life to Russia and the Eastern Bloc, so has the other brother put his life in China. Call his name. Dennis Balcom. His name. Dennis Balcom. That man put his life on his field. I believe this message is blessing you. Please visit and share videos on anointedtube.com, the world database of Christian preachers, to help us reach 100 million people. The message continues after this video about anointed tube. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures, click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. He's an American, but refused to be like America. I was even told he's so committed to his ministry in China that if he's going to a difficult area, they put him into a coffin. So that the spies will not know whom he is. He dies every time he's going to preach a wonderful message. So they carry his coffin across. When they pass police, he got out of the grave and preached the gospel. After making salvation and altar call, he dies again. They carry him home. Commitment without losing sight. That's bad. What I want you by the grace of God to take to Holland. Don't lose sight. When the wind is shaking and the boat is rocking, don't jump out of the boat. Because jumping out may mean death. Staying will mean life. No horse rider jump out of the top of the horse because it's galloping. No fish Seize the wave and storm of the water and jump to the ground. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Why should you leave the ground God put you to jump to water when it's safer to be bruised outside than to jump to the water? No fish. Why do fish not escape from water to jump to the store, to the shore when the wind is tempestuous? Because they know there are many people who have no hook who want to eat fish. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying tonight? 
My brother Colin, I come by the authority of the word of God. If your business shake, stay there. If your ship shake, stay there. Don't run away. For if we faint not, we shall reap. Christians are getting too lazy. They hear that there's snow in London. The job of that day is cancelled. Whereas, there's no. Yesterday night, Dr. Reed said to me, the weather man said, I said, no, my weather said. And we went to London, no snow. We came back, no snow. It was windy, yes. God made wind and God made sun. Why do we only choose the opposite for our own disadvantage? Is anybody here what I'm saying? Unbelievers wake up in the morning, they look at the weather, they say, it's good enough for me to go. Christians look at it and say, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of laziness. Amen. <laughs> Why is the church constantly in need of prayer? She makes no effort. Why are Christians constantly poor? Because they are not determined to succeed. Why is it that every time the wind of life blow, the church is worse heat? Why is it that whenever we hear of auction, 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 auction in uh, Mark and Spencer, the first people to get there are Christians. When Christians see expensive suit on the window, they say, my God. Unbeliever, look at it and say, how many do you have? I need two. Christian, look at it and say, it's too expensive. As if they are going to cheap heaven. Find out from this large crowd here tonight, nobody owns a bank. We are all taking loans and borrowing. 90% of all of you here have plastic cards. You can't pay for what you buy. Why? You are credit worthy. Why don't we become loners and not borrowers? Why are we not head instead of being tail? Why are we lenders instead of being... Why are we borrowers instead of lenders? Jesus came to give us sound mind. We should stop going back. We should wake up from bed and begin to do the devil harm. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Don't give your head to the devil. Don't give your eyes to the devil. Don't give your mouth to the devil. I said to myself this afternoon, I said when I get to the church, I'm going to ask how many were here last night. Holy Spirit said, shut up! Tell them to be well if they want to be well. Not every time you come to church, all the sick come out, you rush out. It's time for the saints to be well. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Forty years in the wilderness, there was not one feeble man among them. You say, do all see? No. But those who want to see, see. Is anybody hearing me? You are a cripple. I look at you at the wheelchair. I say, next week, you are not permitted to bring your wheelchair. He said, what do I do? I say, go home. Before I finish talking, they get out of the wheelchair, they go. You tell somebody here, you like that wheelchair? Oh, yes. And the member said, you know where that brother stays that has wheelchair? So it's marked. You know that sister that is blind, her seat is marked. We are not supposed to be marked. We are supposed to make a mark. Can anybody say hallelujah? hallelujah? He was bruised for iniquities. He was wounded for our transgressions. We should get out of the sick bed and go heal the sick. We should get out of bed of affliction and go give people comfort. We should get out of suffering and proclaim prosperity. Why men slept, the enemy so tears. Let's sow good seed and refuse the devil.
to replace it with tears. Raise your right hand up right now. Say to yourself, nothing will tie me down anymore. The spirit of bondage out of my life. The spirit of setback out of my life. That's why I'm asking you to come forward tonight. Get out of the trap of the enemy. Get to the attraction of God's Holy Spirit. Let us become the healers and not the sick. Let us become the losers and not the tied. Let us become strengtheners and not the weak. Let us become miracle workers and not those who need miracle. God wants to use us all. Can anybody say amen to that? Amen. That's why we are in the church. Come sick, go well. Come bound, go loose. Come poor, go rich. Why? Why is the church on earth? The church is on earth to turn the world to a good place. That's why we are here. We should not be the one sick. We are the one Jesus told, go heal the sick. We are the one he told, visit the sick. Clothe the naked. Bless the poor. We are the one he gave the injunction. Take the gospel to the whole world. Not for the last two weeks I didn't come to church and nobody cared. And you backslide. Why are you no more coming to the church? I was there for two weeks. Nobody came. Aren't you ashamed that you are supposed to go to others? And you are looking for who to come to you? And when I mean shame, I mean shame. Why should you be the complainer instead of the testifier? There are things we are not permitted to say with our mouth if we were obeying the gospel of Christ. You are the head and not the tail. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying tonight? You are to heal the sick and not the sick. You say I'm in the world. You are in the world, but you are not of the world. Now, when a brother comes to visit and say, I have not seen you in the church. Yeah, because I've been sick for the last three weeks and nobody came from the church. It's the same thing to me. That's your word. I was too. Nobody came. Let's go find another church. That's a shameful testimony. Tell the person who told you I was down for three weeks, nobody came. Get up. Let's go to the church. Let's go look for who to heal. Don't support evildoers. Challenge them. God's property? Did you forget you are God's ambassador? Christianity is Christ duplicated. Say that to everybody. Christianity is Christ duplicated. Who went to school here? Peter, tell me what that means. To be a Christian is to be exactly like Christ. He, he will repeat himself again and again in the life of a believer. What is Christianity? Christianity is Christ multiplied. Say that. Christianity is Christ multiplied. What is Christian life? Christ that was once far is now in me. And through me to come to you. And through you to go to another person. Christianity is Jesus multiplied. Jesus spent 33 and a half years here. How many times was he in the hospital for one week? No. What did he do? He healed the sick. He raised the dead. He blessed the poor. Why are we only looking for the negative side of the Bible? I preached one wicked message two weeks ago. Jesus said I was sick and you, vis you did not visit me. You visited me. I said I'm a visitor to the sick and not the sick. He said I was in the prison. You, you visited me. I said I'm, I'm not the prisoner. I'm the one who visits prisoners. Pick yourself to the positive side. Is anybody hear what I'm saying tonight? Don't only look for the bad side to make a case strong enough to be backed by those who are not strong. If we want to practice Christianity, half of the people here tonight will not be permitted to enter this church. Because you are not supposed to be here. Sick. 
are supposed to be here healing the sick. Did you hear what I'm saying? That's our job. We are the good seed sowers. We are not the tongues. We are not the tissues. We are not the one that went to bed. We are the one who watch over the sheep by night. I've called you out to deny you more sicknesses. To deny you setback. To deny you failure. And to put into you what the devil stole. To give to you what God has for you. Lift up your two hands. Thank you, precious Father. Thank you, Lord, for your resurrection power. Thank you for substituting our lives with your life. Thank you that you were the one who rose from the grave and said, I'm he that was dead, and I'm now alive forevermore. May these hands never return empty handed may they from this night proclaim with their mouth I'm delivered I'm set free I'm healed I'm well may they never be victim anymore but may they become victors may they never be deprived of your success may they become testifiers God I pray for the saints that from this night they will not sleep when the devil steal their money, steal their home, steal their marriage, steal everything that concerns them. May they become rebukers of the devourer. Amen. And may the power of faith come to their hearts that they may know that they are more than conquerors to Christ that strengtheneth them. I thank you, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, let everybody say amen. 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 Watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures, click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you.
Idausa is my father. My first encounter with uh, Archbishop Idahosa, he was doing a big crusade uh, in the center of Accra, which is called Circle. He said, if your faith say yes, God cannot say no. Idausa is a man that believe with God, all things are possible. He had an unwavering faith. He had an unshaking faith. He had an unbreaking faith. He had faith in God. He saw God as he's talking to a faithful father. He saw God like his son will see a father who he trusts that is faithful. Whatever I ask my daddy to do, he will do it. That was a Dowser's level of faith, beyond mass uh, explanation. He had faith. Spiritual a person, yet he was so human in nature. A man who reached out to everyone, the high, and the law in society. A man who rubs shoulders with presidents and the highest of dignitaries you can think of in society. I feel very blessed because the Lord has called me to preach the word of God in Africa and particularly in Nigeria. Um, I've been here with my husband 40 years now. Uh, it, it's a blessing. And it's particularly been a blessing to work with Papa Idahosa and Mama Idahosa. When you talk about legacy, I remember traveling with Archbishop Idahosa to Kaduna for the consecration of Bishop Oyudepo. I think it's Faith Liberation Chapel. I remember it as if it is today. And uh, Archbishop said, we are going. And when we got to Benin Airport, uh, Okada, uh, that's Chief Igbenidion, had given him an aircraft. So we flew from Benin City Airport to Kaduna. And I carried, and it was there he told me in the preaching, he said, this is my son. At the point, at that time, I didn't really know Bishop Edipo. This must have been early in the 80s or something. And then many, a couple of weeks after, Bishop Edipo came to Church of God Mission Sunday evening service. And I remember the first message he preached. It was on the prodigal son. The man brought me out from the dungeon. Papa Idahosa was, he was a man full of energy and vision. Uh, he, he, he was always getting, moving on from one project to another. And often when he started a new project, we whites, we Oibos would say, why is he doing that? We couldn't see the vision at all. We thought, hmm, this is very funny. But then, sometime later, we would realize, oh yes, okay, I see why he's done that now. And I was a Muslim that I gave my life to Christ. In Ghana, there was this kind of freedom of worship. There were a lot of Muslims. And among those people that by the grace of God, I gave my life to Christ. And I wanted to go to Bible school when I felt the call of God upon my life. And unfortunately for me, at that particular time, with the Assemblies of God Ghana, there was no space for women to go to Bible school. So my pastor called me and said, he wants me to go to Nigeria and meet with Indahosa because there is a room in that particular ministry for women. And I traveled to Nigeria by the grace of God on getting there. I met with the Archbishop my first time of meeting the Archbishop in Dahosa of Church of God Mission International. What an awesome privilege it was to see this man of faith and boldness. I will never forget the Onitsha Crusade. At that time, the head of state in Nigeria 
had passed the law that nobody should do open air crusades. And Archbishop said he went to pray and said, God, and God, what they are saying, and God asked him, What do you want? He said, I want to do crusade. God said, Go ahead and do your crusade. So he sent us, I was part of the uh, advanced team, to go and paste posters all over Odicha. And we went to put posters all over Odicha. And the first day of the crusade, a truckload of soldiers came. The man of faith, the man of prayer, the man of courage, the man of peace. And Archbishop mounted the platform and, and the soldiers came with their guns. When Archbishop started preaching, they all put their guns down. When he made the altar call, they all raised their hands to receive Jesus as Lord and personal Savior. And we stood there and the whole crusade was an eye-opener for us. And right there, I decided I needed to go and know more from this man. Fortunately, he was offering scholarship for people who want to attend Bible school in Benin, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute. And so that particular year, I uh, requested, I wrote, and fortunately, I was invited to come. So uh, we went to Nigeria to begin. Uh, my class, actually I went there in 79. My class started in 1980. And uh, we went through the Bible training and it was powerful. We were all charged up. He started uh, the Word of Faith schools, he started the Christian Hospital, Faith Mediplex, he started Benson Hoja University, all those. And well, he's, he's a man we can't, we can't forget. He was a great example to us, and I thank God. It's particularly good for us, whites, British, because in Britain, uh, people are rather skeptical these days. You'll not find many people who are really born again Christians. Um, people of faith are few in Britain. But if we can come here and our faith can be uh, increased, can be inspired, particularly by the things that Papa did, we are blessed. Let me share this. And I think for those who were around in Church of God Mission at that time, we traveled to Washington for Jesus. John Geminis went to Baltimore, flew to New York, and then flew to Lagos on Nigeria with 11 hours. And then we took Okada from Okada Air from Lagos to Benin City. It was bad weather. Brother, it was one turbulence I, I told God, as long as I'm alive, never let me face anything like this again in my travel. I'm sure Dausa and the wife Margaret were in the first class, which is only divided by a curtain because it's a 90 seater plane. And we took off from Lagos to Benin. It was bad weather, raining cats and dogs. We re entered a storm. There were Filipino pilots. And then they said that he has lost contact. The pilot said, listen, he has lost contact with Lagos. And so he doesn't know where he is. That is ridiculous. You are supposed to be taking us to Benin. So if you, the pilot, has lost contact and you don't know where you are and it's raining cats and dogs, what do you want us to do? And when I looked through the wood, brother, I was sitting at the edge of my seat like this. I was shaking in my boots. I'd never been scared like that. I thought I was, I, it, it was a life and death situation. The plane would lose, dive, turn left, turn right. When I looked through the curtain, I was looking at the reaction of the Abishoy Daosa. We say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then one time he stood up in the aircraft. He lifted his hand. I will never forget. He said, God, this is what he said. God, you called me and you didn't say I would die in a plane crash. My mission is not finished. My assignment is not over. We call the enemy to order and command the devil to back up. Now you pilot, you better find out where you are and take us to our destination in the name of Jesus. And he sat down, five minutes and the pilot said, he has made contact with Port Harcourt. Listen to this. 
We are supposed to be doing 30 minutes from Lagos to Benin. And the pilot, we, we landed in Port Harcourt. So we, were under, we have lost our way. We would have ended up in the sea. I will never forget. We landed in Lagos. It was still raining. That is where the testimony is. Mama, I was there. You can ask her. I told Papa, can I please go for bus? Because I was afraid. Can we get a bus so we go to Benin? He said, no. James, you don't travel like I do. I must conquer the devil today in the air. I said, what is this? I was scared. I said, Papa, you want us to die? He said, James, if I don't conquer the devil, I will not be able to travel by air. Okada gave us his gold plated aircraft. Chief Egbeni, the one he called him, the plane rolled out from the hangar and we went by air to Benin. And that Sunday evening, he made me go to church and give a testimony. He said, Ghana boy. He calls me Ghana boy. I came and said, Give them your testimony. You coward. <laughs> Another powerful miracle was when the witches in the whole world decided to come and have a meeting in Benin City. And Archbishop said, not when he's here, there won't be any such meeting. The chief priest then was summoned, his name Chief Ebohon, because he was a representative of the witches then. And he said, the meeting, nobody, not even God, could stop the witches from meeting. Then daddy said, or papa said, yes, God will not waste his time to stop you because I'm here to stop you. God has put me here to stop you. And guess what? That meeting never took place in Benin City. When you are with him one on one, you will feel an aura that defies definition. You know, it's as if you are in the presence of God, of a deity, of something that is beyond where you are. You know, uh, he never celebrated mediocrity. He never took no for an answer. He dared to go where nobody wants to go or everybody feared to go. He was a man that believed in venturing where others fear to venture. He was a trailblazer. I remember those days, for example, this television ministry that's becoming anything today. It also started it. In 1974-75, I'm honored to have been one of his sons. And uh, by the grace of God, I think that um, that sign, wonder, anointing, and his boldness. I was I did a meeting for Dr. Maurice Serrillo in 2010, and just before I spoke in his world conference, they said, uh, "Oh, miracles don't happen in America because they have a lot of doctors. It happens in the third world." Well, when I took the microphone, I just shared my testimony. 23 cripples gave me their sticks and began to walk. Um, that kind of boldness to decree and declare, I took it from the late Archbishop. I believe in the transference of spirits. And I believe strongly, like God told Moses, I will take up the spirit that is upon you and I will put it upon the 70. I'm one of the people who took of that spirit of signs and wonders from the Archbishop. Making a movie of the Archbishop will really, really help the next generation. Because the young preachers and the young ministers that are coming up have no clue of who he was. It, I mean, he will still be preaching and cripples will start walking. Um, that was an awesome man of faith. I remember whilst we were in school, he went to visit and it was shown on TV. Um, he went to visit Kenneth Copeland and when he got there, they, he was supposed to have gone the previous day, but he arrived late. So they announced, when they announced that the Archbishop Idahosa has arrived, six cripples got out of their wheelchairs. That is how anointed uh, Papa was. We must keep his legacy alive. 
Idahosa is dead to some people, but to us, to me, Idahosa lives. Hello, I am Bishop Margaret Benson Idahosa, the wife of the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa that did wonders while he was on earth here. Early in the morning when I rise, I will lift up my eyes. Now let me let you know how I got to meet him. You know, in those early years, he used to ride his bicycle with some trucks going from street to street and one of it was my street. And every time he comes, we call him pastor. Pastor, he was young then, about 21 or 22. He was very, very young, but he didn't mind. He was not ashamed of the gospel because he knew that that was the power of God in his life. And one of these days, he was riding past and people were crying in my house. What's up? <laughs> And he just stopped, brought his, brought his uh, small little Bible out and came in, just uh, uh, with it through the crowd. And he came and I said, Pastor, please, today is not like any other day. Somebody just died. <laughs> and he said, Ah, I have been riding my bicycle all through. See, this time it was about four o'clock. And I want to raise somebody. I say, hey, please, I beg you, don't, don't make a mockery of your God. He said, no, 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 no. I want to wake him up because God has told me in the book. Then he opened the book and read it that, uh, I, I, behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpent, to tread upon scorpions and to raise the dead. And I said, listen, don't make a mockery of yourself. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal that thing. Raise the dead. I said what? I beg, wait till I talk. Benson, you mean what you say that we can raise dead person? Yes, absolutely. Have you raised dead person before? Uh, no. Why? What you say I can do it? Yes, in the name of Jesus. He said, no, 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 come and show me where the baby was. So I said, okay. I took him to the room where the baby was lying. It, it was she. She was about uh, three years old, three or four, four years old then. And I said, "Listen, this baby died at about nine, and it's about four o'clock now. The baby is already changing color. The fa why why he why she was not being buried at this time is that the father has to go to the secretariat to get a death certificate." And he said, oh, there's no need for that now. Let's do it. Let's do it. I said, how? How are you going to do it? And he said, okay, go out if you don't want to see, see me do it. But, uh, you know, as a stubborn child, then I stood, at the, I stood at the door. I stood at the door with my back laid at the door. One, one eye on this side and one eye on the front door. And he prayed. Child. Be healed. I will bring to you an offering. After he prayed, he asked me, 
What is the name of the child? What is the girl's name? I say it's Inwarata. I'm a living testimony. I give God the glory for keep counting me among the living today. I'm a testimony that the whole world know about through my father, late Ben Sinidahosa. I was sick about two weeks. After the sick, conversion hold me. So I, I, I die. When I died, they kept me inside one room. So my people was crying, weeping. About two hours, a bit three hours later, my father come, my late Benson in the house. He said, what is happening? He told him that her daughter, their daughter has lost. They said, what happened to her? He said, she was confused. So they tried the, in the ordinary native daughter tried, they can't raise her back to life. He said, where is her now? He said she swam in there. He said he asked my father the question. He said, Daddy, do you believe that the God I serve can raise him come back to life? My father said yes. So he said they should take him to the room. They take him to where yeah, they, they lie me down. So ca carry me, they were praying with some of members. As they pray with God that answered by fire, hear their prayer. I come back to life. Hallelujah! <laughs> Hallelujah! That is how I'm a living so today. And he just stretched his Bible and himself on that child and said, Inuata, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that has empowered me to raise the dead. Now, come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Inuata, I command you, rise up! I was just peeping. And all of a sudden, the, the child that died at about 9 o'clock sneezed. Another day died to me after a year and three months in the womb. So my mother passed through many tribulations before she gave back to me. Many said, maybe I'm not a baby, I'm a wood, I'm this, but for God be thy glory. When they gave back to me, I'm, I'm a human being. And after they gave back to me, the devil, the useless man, raised up his ugly head to take my soul away. Do you know I took to my heels? I couldn't stand, I couldn't wait, and I ran out. <laughs> with him to the mother. He said, please give this child something to eat. And everybody was surprised. Everyone was shocked. Ah, and he just left. And when he left, I, I sat down and I was thinking, what is the thing that made this man to raise this child from the dead? There must be power. Super power. Then I wasn't a child of God. My mother used to serve, um, she was a princess of Olokun, Shango, and all that. And I said, oh, the, the, the power that raised this child from the dead must be a power that surpasses the power of these graven images that has no power. So the father just came and we started celebrating, but he was gone. But in the night I sat and I, I started praying and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, 
just touch me. I have been hearing messages of salvation from here and there. Even the church I, 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 I used to go then. But I just knelt down and I said, Father, let Jesus come into my heart right now. And I need to know this power that raised this child. And that was all I prayed. I didn't know how to pray salvation prayer. But I just knelt down and I said, Father, please, if you were the one that raised this child up, let come into my life and let me act and walk and believe like as that young man that we call pastor believed and he did this and you know when i finished prayer there was an abundant joy unspeakable joy in my spirit and the following day uh we, we used to call him brother benson he came i said where is the child you said the child is there and i called him to the room i said you know what i did last night i did you know uh, I, I don't know how to do it, but I just knelt by my bedside and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, let me have a part of that power. I said, ah, you have done it. And I knelt down, he prayed, and I, and I said the, the sinner's prayer, and that was what got me into where I am now. And I'm glad. Okay, because I'm still alive, my father Benson Dalsa is still alive because I'm a living testimony. I'm glad that I, 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 I'm doing what I'm doing now because there was sign, there was wonder, there was, there, there was miracle that got into my heart. Thank God for today I'm alive. I have about eight children, two girls and two boys and six girls. He was a man that did everything by faith. I have about 10 grandchildren to the glory of God. Now I understand the, the type of joy. The Bible said that the joy that no man can give, that is the joy that Jesus gives when you give your life to him. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preacher's pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you.
you can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you for taking the time to watch this powerful video of Archbishop Benson Indaosa. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was a charismatic Pentecostal preacher. He is the founder of Church of God Mission International. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was popularly referred to as the father of Pentecostalism in Nigeria. And I would like you to know that he was also my spiritual father please do not forget to share this video to bless all the people let this video go viral remain blessed hello this video is about Archbishop Bensi Idaosa his early Christian ministry testimony as a young Christian, I once heard my pastor say during a morning service that Christians could raise the dead in the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe it with my, all my heart. And flying around on my bicycle in those days, I went through the city of Benin in Nigeria in search of a dead person to raise to life. After five hours of hard session, I found a company where a little girl had died a few hours before. The corpse had been cleaned and prepared for burial. I walked boldly to the father of the child. The God whom I serve can bring your baby back to life. I told him, will you permit me to pray for the child and bring her back to life? The man was startled, but he agreed. I walked into the room and up to the bed. The child was cold and dead. With strong faith in the Lord, I called on the Lord to restore the child back to life. I turned to the corpse and called it by name. Arise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. The corpse sneezed heavily. Alas, the child had come back to life. God is Bensi Indaosa. Now, Bensi Indaosa childhood. Bensi Indaosa was born in Benin City on September 11, 1938 to a pagan parents. He was a sickly infant who was always fainting. As a result of his constant illness, his father ordered the mother to throw him in the dustbin. When he was 18, year, 18 months old, he was left on a rubbish heap to die. He was rejected by his father, sent to work on a farm as a servant, and was denied education until he was 14 years old. 
His education was irregular due to the poor financial status of his parents. He later took correspondence course from Britain and the United States while working in Shoe Company. His conversion and call to ministry. His conversion was drastic and his calling supernatural. He was converted by Pastor Akpos on a football field on one Sunday afternoon while playing soccer with his teammates. Thus, young, Benson, young Benson became the first Benin member of Pastor Akbar's small congregation. As a young convert, he became very zealous in winning souls and in conducting outreaches in villages around Benin City. He was called to the ministry in a ninth vision from the Lord. I have called you that you might take the gospel around the world in my name, preach the gospel, and I will confirm my words with signs following said the voice from heaven. The room was filled with the presence of God as Benson fell to his knees before the Lord. Wherever you want me to go, I will go. He prayed through the night, renewing his vows to God and interceding for his people who were yet to hear the message of salvation. After his call, Benson launched into ministry, work preaching from village to village. The gospel of, the, of, of Jesus Christ with great power and anointing. More people confess Christ as their Savior and more healings occur as he prayed for the sick. Expansion of his ministry and his credentials. Archbishop Benson Daosa, the Archbishop himself and the founder of Church of God Mission International Incorporated with his headquarters in Benin City, Nigeria, established over 6,000 churches throughout Nigeria, Ghana before 90, 1971. Many of the ministers he supervised pastor churches of 1,000 to 4,000 people. In addition to filling the position of Archbishop of Church of God Mission, he, also, he, he was also president of All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, president of Idaosa World Outreach, and president of Faith Medical Center. He had positions in numerous organizations, including the College of, Bish of Bishop of the International Communion of Christian Churches and the Ora Robert uh, University in Oklahoma. He also earned a diploma in divinity from Christ for the Nation Institute in Dallas, Texas, which he attended in 1971 a doctorate of divinity in 1981 from the world faith college new orleans and a doctor of law degree from ora robert university in march 1984 he also received another degree he's also received other degrees from the international university in Brussels, belgium archbishop benson and his wife margaret idaosa were blessed with four children Idaosa Supreme Tax. So winning was Idaosa primary consign with a motto evangelism our supreme tax. He worked towards his goal of reaching the origin Nigeria, Africa, and the rest of the world with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As a black African, he found the doors of African countries were wide open and he ministered in over 133 countries all 123 countries all over the world crusade played a major role in his ministry he was involved at least one crusade per month a record crowd of nearly 1 million people a night attended his lagos crusade in april 1985 he established the redemption television ministry with a potential viewing audience of 15 million people what leading gospel minister said about our bishop idaosa according to mrs gordon frada lisa president of christ for the nation incorporated dallas texas usa i know of no young black in all africa who is preaching who is reaching million as benson is in crusade with hundreds of thousands in attendance in in, a, in his weekly nationwide telecast in his Bible school, training eager students from several nations. 
He also conducted campaigns in Sweden, Singapore, Malaysia, Korea, Australia, and United States, where he often appeared on national religious telecast. His burden for souls, his ministry of healing and miracles, even to the raising of several dead, demonstrates his demonstrate he is especially core of the Lord in this end time. Dr. Ben Akosa remarked, Ben Sindaosa is sought after by everyone in the state, from government officials to beggars. When they pose questions and explain their problem to this man, they receive instantaneous miracle solution, just as the people did in Bible days with God's prophet. The people got miraculous answer from, his, from this mighty leader of God's people, said Daniel Oris. Benin City respect and salute this great man of God even at his death. I have been with him on visit to many officials, to the governor, to the powerful Benin tribal kings. He moved with God and his people knows it. His great miracle cathedral, his headquarters sit over 10,000 in 1981. His Bible school attract upper class people from different African nations and also come from Maurice, India, uh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, the Middle East, Europe and other nations of the world. A truly international Bible training center of dynamic faith. People know that Bishop Idaosa preached what he practiced. Dr. Idaosa evangelistic ministry has reached nations around the world. He was the first Af black African evangelist to shake Australia in a massive crusade that got national attention. His seminar have affected Christians and church leaders in many countries. I sincerely salute this man because he practiced among his own people what he preached to the world. Bensi Indaosa was a man who believed God's promises and that God's miracle provision applies to Africans as well as to Americans. He believed that Africa has a part in God's work and Africa will reap God's blessing. Evangelist T. S. Bond from Tulsa, Oklahoma remarked, Many who followed Idaosa's teaching have been saved from poverty and have learned to plant out of their have learned how to plant out of their desperate need and to look to God as their divine source, thereby becoming prosperous Christian in their own land. Idaosa rose from the rank of an ordinary man to award leaders leadership as a pastor, a builder, a counselor, a prophet, a teacher, uh, an apostle an evangelist, a man of godly wisdom and of Christ-like compassion, whose ministry has blessed million, millions the world over. Idaosa was the greatest African ambassador of the apostolic Christian faith to the world. The secret of his success. Idaosa operated in faith. He had a robust faith. He believed and trusted God with a childlike faith. He once said that living a daily life of absolute faith in God is the only secret to great success. He believed God for everything. All things are possible to him that believes. He spent quality times in prayer and in the study of God's word. He said that if someone spent time studying the Bible and acting on it, people will come looking for that person for life solutions. Idaosa also spent time studying the works and the lives of other successful people, both in the gospel ministry and other faith of human endeavors. And he applied the principles he learned, he learned from these successful people to his life and ministry. He was very energetic, hardworking. One of the ministers who served under him said that he had never seen a man who worked as hard as Archbishop Benson Idaosa. He was committed and consistent, and he had confidence in himself. He was very humble and full of godly wisdom. Archbishop Bensi Idaosa was said to be the leader of over 7 million 
Jesus people worldwide before he went to be with the Lord in February 1998. Now I'm going to talk about his early ministry again. As a youth, he got converted to Christianity by a certain pastor at Paul and joined the flagging congregation as one of the first members. He was very active and converted many to Christianity. After experiencing a revelation from God, calling him into ministry, he began to conduct outreaches from village to village before establish, establishing his church in a store in Benin City. Archbishop Bensi Idaosa was well known for many notable quotable quotes, including "My God is not a poor God." Your attitude determines your your attitude determines your attitude. It is more risky not to take risk. I am a possibilitarian. A big head without a big brain is a big load to the neck. If your faith says yes, God cannot say no. Among others, many of these messages on faith, miracle, and prosperity remain a classic among Pentecostal. He had strong links with international gospel ministers like Billy Graham, T.L.S. Bond, Kenneth Hagin, Penny Inn, Ryan Bonke, Maurice Cerullo, Ora Robert, amongst others, and took the gospel to 145 nations in his lifetime. At the time of his death in 1998, he had preached to more white than any black man and to more black than any white man. His desire to meet the need of the total man led him to establish several other arms of the ministry apart from the church. They include Faith, Metaplex, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, Word of Faith, Group of School, Bensi Indaosa University, which is currently under leadership of a son, Reverend E. F. B. Uh, Idaosa. His wife, Margaret uh, Idaosa, is the current Archbishop of the church. It was used by God to perform many miracles, including healing the blinds, raising up 28 people from the dead at different times in his ministry. You must understand this powerful man of God that God used to affect the nation of the world. And I'm glad and privileged that he was my father in the Lord. I am honored to be a part of his anointing, a part of his, of his ministry. I want to ask you, please make sure you share this videos, this video, this particular video to bless all the people and make sure you have enough time to visit Anointed Tube, support Anointed Tube, and let people all over the world around you, your village, your town, your city, your colleagues, your family, your friends, all your contact, get to know about Anointed Tube. So thank you for taking the time to listen to this or, or watch this video. I believe that um, your life can never remain the same because God's servant was such a powerful, powerful, humble, great man of God that God used before he was called to be with him. I, and I'll say it again, I am grateful and I'm privileged to be a son to Archbishop Bensi in the house. The Lord bless you.